Are you stuck at home in lockdown? Yeah, I know, we all are. Don't worry, we've got you covered because it's time once again for Live at Night with Pete Ferrero. Don't you want to be like, I don't give a shit. Um, send me your address. I'll be happy to send you a copy. Oh, excellent, yeah. That's awesome, okay. And so, uh, and I and I paid for it, so that's just lovely. No. <laughs> I'm on, okay, what's that? I'm live at night. Where whatever happens, happens. Now along with his special guests, here's your host, Pete Ferrero. Okay. Hey, we are live. We're live at night. And I've got Tommy Avalone. Is that right? I, think yeah. I just heard you say in the movie. I was just rewatching the movie. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. And Ray Esposito. Cheers. Before, cheers, guys. I'm drinking a Lagunitas. I don't know what you got. Oh, there you go. Nice. Um, first I'll of all, in a Club 33 glass. Nice. <laughs> I got a green, nice green. I got a green arrow. Green arrow glass. There you go. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not a Ghostbusters. Uh... <laughs> I got it. I go get it. It's right back there. I'll be right back. <laughs> um, I'm about to call you a nerd, but then I realized I'm drinking it at a Disney Club glass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't really call me a nerd. Okay. Before before we get into all the cool Bill Murray stuff and this, how you met and all that kind of stuff, I. I got to say, uh, both of you just recently had uh, new babies and whatnot. So uh, I know, but I know, Ray, you had it during this whole crisis and pandemic. Uh, what was, this is, by the way, Ray Esposito is um, the other person that's with us here, a producer on uh, okay. stories. So how, what was that experience like? Well, I know Tommy had his during it as well, but ours was like at the beginning. So she just turned a month old and it was crazy. It was crazy. Like, we were in the hospital. It was just as they were like temperature checking people when they were coming into the room. Um, so it was, it was scary, you know, but everything went well. We got in and out of there and, and, you know, everybody there is at the hospital doing a really good job, obviously. Yeah. You know, but uh, it was just, it was definitely scary to be, to be there. So. Right. Like um, the one place I wouldn't want to be during a pandemic is at a hospital. No, like when we got there, we were like walking through the emergency room. There was like, a woman with a mask on and I was, I was taken aback because it was the first time I, you know, with all this, that now I see people with masks all over the TV. All the time, right, yeah. 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 It was the first one and I was like in the hospital pushing, like pushing my pregnant wife and I was like, this is nuts. It was just crazy, but yeah. you know, it all worked out. We're good, you know. Tommy, how about you? This was during the pandemic as well, right? Yeah, yeah, but my wife did all the work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but was it scary because with being in the hospital and all that stuff? No, not really. You know, uh, I just felt like uh, the the hospital people were kind of preoccupied with like other crazier things that are happening. Um, so I mean, it was it was quiet. There wasn't that many people there. You know, you're in your own like this own separate sort of thing where it's not like you're not mixing in with people who are patients for other stuff. You know. Yeah. So um, I did find a. WWE uh, ice cream bar in the cafeteria, so I enjoyed eating that. It was the Macho Man on one side and John Cena on the other. So. Ooh, I it's like that. They brought that back. Wait, they brought back the ice cream bars. I didn't even know that. that well, it's not the bar, but it's like a, I, I, I guess it's a bar, but like a, it's like um, I don't know, like a, I don't want to say a Klondike maybe, but it's like the new but, version of the old thing. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's wow. No it's stick. Sick. There's no stick. I don't know if you know, but CM Punk was the one who sort of uh, made that happen a few years back, right? Do you remember it's that? It's insulting that you had to say, I don't know if you know. I meant to the listening audience, yeah. Before we did a Ted DiBiase movie. I've, I've stuck with Vic Foley, Roddy Piper. Like, my list is long. I, I know the yeah. wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I wanted to ask you about that, too. I mean, obviously, we're both wrestling fans. I'm going to have DiBiase on here tomorrow. Um, I go. met a lot of wrestlers through the making of that movie, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the documentary I did. Have you met a lot of the, you did a documentary, uh, a set, what was the, the name of it? The Santa Claus movie. I can't think of the title of it. I Am Santa Claus. I Am Santa Claus, yeah. And um, you worked with Mick Foley quite a bit. Obviously, yeah. he did all over the movie. Yeah, I mean, so I've, I'm a huge, huge wrestling fan, and I've always wanted to put a wrestler in every single one of our movies. So... Back when I was trying to do scripted stuff, um, our first wrestler we ever worked with was uh, the Blue Meanie, you know? Oh, uh, oh, he's awesome. Killer. Yeah. And I've done stuff with uh, King Kong Bundy before. Mm -hmm. And then the next movie we did Al Snow and Blue Meanie. And then the next movie was Tommy Dreamer and Blue Meanie. 
Uh, somehow Jim Neal Neidhart uh, oh, yeah, he's in there somewhere. Classic, yeah. Um, yeah. But then when we started doing the documentaries, we're like, oh, how, how's this going to work? You know, like, how can you organically put a wrestler in a movie? And someone was like, you know, Mick really like likes being Santa as a Santa thing. And so we talked to him through Tommy Dreamer. Um, and we got Mick in the movie, and Tommy Dreamer's in Santa Claus, Beanie's in That's Santa right. Claus, yeah. Hyper, Jerry Lawler, DDP, like, you know, yeah. DDP's in the credits towards the end, but uh, just because he was at the same Comic Con as Santa. Okay, cool. Yeah. But even the Bill Murray stories, we interviewed uh, George the Animal Steel. So, um, yeah. He just, right. he just, he's in the deleted scenes. And then for Waldo on Weed, there's a picture of Snoop Dogg, and he's mentioned, and he is technically in the WWE Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Yeah. Bro, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My record's pretty strong. But, I mean, you know, it's going to get harder as the subject matter yep. change, for sure. <laughs> Very yeah. typical. Um, Although, we did produce the movie Ghost Heads, and Zack Ryder was in that. Oh, That's- very cool. Yeah. Um, well, so... I met Mick Foley. He did an interview for The Price of Fame. Uh, he's in our movie. Nice. And uh, it is funny because when people ask me about meeting him, I do point to the fact that when we interviewed him, his entire basement was set up like Christmas and it was like July. <laughs> so, yeah. When did you do that? Uh, when? Yeah. Um, that was probably either, that was probably 16, 2016, I did that interview. Yeah. Okay. Came out in yeah. seventeen. I'm gonna say fifteen, sixteen. Pretty sure sixteen. When when did um when did your doc come out? Santa came out twenty fourteen. Yeah, it was a little bit ahead of the. You were ahead of the. We, our time. No, I'm just curious at what point your mix so like July. So he still would have had a beard probably for being Santa because he didn't stop. He was pretty still. I mean, he still does Santa. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's been so long. Like, it's it's a it's struggled to remember all the particular dates of when I did interviews because that in my first documentary that price of fame took so long to make and i don't know yeah. why that is because i guess it's just you're learning the story as you're going along and then you finally find it and then then it takes pretty then it moves pretty quickly mm-hmm. um do you find that's your process too like in, with your documentaries or are you do you kind of know what you want to do at the top of it and then just uh-huh. tell that story or are you constantly finding the story it depends i mean like santa claus took us about like three years to do yeah um, and that's like planning on filming at least a year of these people's lives, you know? It, it right. trickled over to a little bit of a year and a half and then edited. But, but at that time, like I was working at a radio station in Philadelphia. So like my full-time job wasn't to edit the movie. So that's right. what really kind of took a while. And it was my first doc. You know, you're trying to figure these things out. You don't have your own sort of guide map yet, you know? You don't, even have uh, a, you don't necessarily have a style. You don't have, you don't have... The, yeah, you don't have a format or anything sort of like, there's no guide to making documentaries. You can only watch a master class so much. Yeah, I mean, you, know? you, just, you, just, you just never did it before. So you're not, yeah, exactly. you know, you're, you're, you're crossing your own, you're creating your own path. Um, and then so with Bill Murray, like Bill Murray had a lot of start, stops and starts. But like once these things like really start, we've been usually turning them around in about a year's time, like when yeah. they're really starting. Yeah, because I feel like there does come a point when you're like, okay, uh, I don't even know. Here's here's the here's the six or seven places that we're going. Here's the interviews that we're doing. Uh, blah 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 blah. And then then you're moving. Then there's there's some movement there. Now, how did Ray and you meet for this one? You had done something together. Yeah, I mean, do you want to do it, Ray? Or you want me to? Yeah, Ray. Well, yeah. So I um, I'm I'll a big. Correct you if you did anything wrong. What did, you say? what did I do? I'm sorry. I said, I'll correct you if you get anything wrong. <laughs> I'm going to get everything wrong, though. Uh, Tommy and I were in Nova Scotia. Wrong. And no, I was, <laughs> I, uh, I'm a big Ghostbusters fan. And I saw there was a Kickstarter for a documentary about crazy Ghostbuster fans uh, and people. That Technically, it was Indiegogo, but you know. Already here we go. Yeah. Uh, so we did an Indiegogo. I saw, and uh, they were doing a, a, a project called Ghost Heads. So I, uh, I actually emailed um, Tommy. I, I found his email through the through the Indiegogo, and I said, "Hey, I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. I, I think this project is absolutely amazing. Like, I have a production company. I'd love to like give you guys some money and help finance it a little bit." Yeah. And um, that was it. <laughs> like I, I said, I'd like to give you guys help. Tommy you guys was out. like, okay. Yeah, I mean, cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but um, 
yeah. you know, and Tommy was the producer on that project. And um, we just kind of hit it off from there. We, we started that. And then I said, hey, listen, if you got any other projects, my company's looking to maybe invest in some more and develop some more projects. And awesome. that led to uh, Murray. So, um, so to, to Tommy, you know, listen, I had always heard about the Murray stories too. I mean, that was a kind of a pop culture thing, right? I mean, yeah. what, what you, you did Santa and, and that was very cool, but what tr triggered in your mind, like, Oh man, this Murray thing, I got to do this doc. Are you a huge Murray fan? Where does it start? Well, I, mean, with I, I do love Ghostbusters. It's my favorite movie, you know, mm -hmm. but like uh, the blue meeting was at my uh, apartment once and he was just telling me about the story where like, uh, the bathroom, the hands over the eyes, and you know, you turn around, and no one will ever believe you. Right. You know, and I was like, that's weird. And it was like, you start reading these stories about like he's in, you know, Scotland cleaning your dishes at a, a party, and the kickball story story uh, just uh, popped up. And um, it was always just something I thought about doing. And then after Santa Claus, I wanted to do a doc. I was like, well, what what do I do next? You know, and I was like, what if I did. Bill Murray stories, but treated the Bill Murray stories, not Bill Murray, but treated the Bill Murray stories as Bigfoot, you know, like that would be. Loved I love the, even the, 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 the poster design or the, the yeah. Netflix design of it is, you know, it's got that, that, that going on. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. And then, so like, we, that was the idea, you know, and all my ideas uh, are bad on paper, you know, Santa, <laughs> Waldo, Murray, all of them, um, People don't quite understand. I mean, Ray gets it, but like not that bad. Every, everyone doesn't seem to understand it. So like when I would tell people about it, they go, yeah, but that's like a short, you know, like that can't be a thing. So we just started filming stuff of our own. Like we, we were in New Jersey at the time. So we did the kickball story, the karaoke story. We interviewed an author and we kind of like put this sizzle together. But in doing so, even when promoting Santa, we were at uh, – uh, New York Comic Con, and I, I saw these Ghostbusters. So I was like, I'll interview them for the Bill Murray. Uh, New York Ghostbusters, Philly Ghostbusters, New Jersey Ghostbusters. Uh, and in doing so, I saw that there was this Canadian guy, Brendan Mertens, doing a Ghostbusters fan documentary. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, look, dude, I was like, I'll interview these, these like tri state area uh, 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 Ghostbusters and give me some questions. I'll interview them for you, give you the footage. But you'll get to Dan Eckford and I write them before I will. I'll give you my questions and we'll swap footage. That was like the beginning. Amazing idea. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was the beginning That's parts good. of our relationship. But then I came across uh, Tom Gedhart uh, from New Jersey Ghostbusters. I was like, I know who this guy is. He is just like one of our Santas. I can help tell the story. I know how to tell it. I told the story, you know? Yeah. Um, so I told him, I'd come on as a producer. I'd help edit. And that was the beginning of our relationship. So the Bill Murray kind of like went on a pause. Uh, we did an Indiegogo, uh, started filming some stuff, met Ray uh, with Old Lime, and we kind of started the production that way, you know? Yeah. Um, Ghost Heads did really well, played Tribeca 2016, went to Netflix for three years. Uh, Ray was very happy and said, what do you got next? And we had this Bill Murray sizzle that we already shot with the kickball, the karaoke and all that sort of stuff. And he's like, this is phenomenal, let's do this. Yeah, and, we, and that's that's really when the movie started. So like, with, when you say about how long does the project start, like we started filming that in 2015, 2016, no, 2015, really. 15. And it, there was a big stop to make Ghost Heads, and then we made Bill Murray stories. Right, and I want to ask you about even just because real quick, you know, I never did use any of that Ghost Heads footage in Bill Murray stories, just because we, one. you know, <laughs> you know, legally we could, but ethically we thought it wasn't right. Right. Um, it's interesting because, and I'll get into the whole, like the distribution end of getting them. Cause I feel like there'll be some filmmakers watching this and how hard that can, that process. Can I hope be. someone's watching it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Three people talking about a movie. Um, but, uh, I want to ask you, Ray, when he pitched you, uh, Murray stories, what did you like about that concept? So I remember he had told me, he's like, Hey, I got this idea about Bill Murray and these crazy stories. And it literally was like, I was like, I'm in. I didn't even hear the full concept. I just knew that it was something I was like, <clears throat> totally in. I, like he told me this idea about following these people who had these run-ins with Bill Murray and it's kind of changed their lives a little bit. And it gave them some inspiration, maybe do better things in their life. And I was like, I don't even hear it anymore. Like show me the sizzle reel. And I thought that that's something that would inspire other people who maybe 
could go out there and do some good in the world or go out there and just be maybe a better person or something. Yeah. And when we tell a story like that, I'm totally in, uh, when it's something like that can inspire somebody or mm. just be a really cool. I just, I knew it. I saw the concept. I saw it and I knew that that was something that was going to be really good. So. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Um, I do know what you mean about having to sort of, you know, you have the idea in your head, you can almost see the film and you're pitching it to people, just regular, just people that you're hanging out at a bar with. No, though, though we can't hang out at a bar right now, you know, and then being like, well, it's a this, it's a that. Everybody is so critical initially when you, when you have something to, to, to pitch, but it must've been awesome to, to get that kind of feedback from Ray. Well, I hate pitching. You know, when you yeah. said like, uh, you know, uh, sitting in a bar, like I would never tell anyone any of my ideas at a bar because I wouldn't want to have to talk about it. You know, like I don't <laughs> like explaining myself to anyone, you know? Yeah. And, um, but me and Ray are very much connected in the idea that we 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 share a lot of the same likes and dislikes. So once, mm -hmm. we're always on the same page with a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so even with Waldo and Weed, like when it was like, we had this sizzle for him and like he it was like right off the bat knew it was going to be good there's also like a trust factor there too yeah um you know we just have very we're just very similar in what we like and what we know can do do good and we we trust each other's skills uh but as far as like the pitching stuff like i don't i don't like saying any of that stuff because it's like i don't want to see someone say yes or no because hey, like, yeah. i don't i don't want their judgment <laughs> and, you know it's funny because as you get further into film, I think that you be, you become that. I think probably at Santa Claus or when I was doing Price of Fame, I, I probably told everybody about it, right? You know what I mean? Because it was the first one and there's a gen genuine excitement about making it, you know? And then you what? start hearing shit and then you're just like, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm never going to talk about it again. Point, when it gets to a point where I've stopped thinking and realized I'm already halfway through. Like I know where, like I know my beats and I know all that sort of stuff. I've already lost interest. You know, yeah. like I don't, I don't like the, all right, I've just pushed play now and I just know how everything goes past this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So then you guys jump in the, on this idea that we're going to do this Bill Murray stories doc. Um, and you, you go full fledged at some point you're going to have to think about uh talking to bill murray right i mean no i mean oh i'm sorry there was like a it felt like you had more steam behind the sentence uh, uh no no, I, no I'm, some, I'm at some point you're going to talk to bill murray and now the only way you can talk and, and it happens in the movie right where you yeah. finally get the number and I'm not asking you for the source, but I mean, at some point you were like, we got to talk to Bill Murray getting him involved in this project because for so many reasons, I would imagine. Well, I mean, not really. Like, that's the thing. It's like a lot of people assume that. Like, we, you know, we never, we would, me and Ray would have conversations all the time. It's like, I don't want, like, okay, so we're making a Bigfoot documentary, right? Yeah. Like, do you really want to see Bigfoot at the end of that movie sitting down with you at like a 2020 and going, so what's with the woods? You right. Know, like, there's, <laughs> It is yeah. it is ruins the magic. Like we made a movie about Santa Claus, directly told everyone Santa Claus doesn't exist, ruined yeah. the magic, and then we create yeah. our own magic. You know, like yeah. Santa but, doesn't exist. What? <laughs> sorry, Ray. I'm sorry, <laughs> but no, uh, <laughs> he exists right here. I'll show you. Right. I, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, so like, so we knew if we like directly like dissected the Bill Murray stories the way we wanted to and just destroyed all the magic, there'd be no fun in that. You know, no, that no one wants to watch a debunking of the Bill Murray stories. You still want to leave that mystery involved. So we sure. never wanted to sit down with Bill. Right. You know, there's times I'm making the phone call with him or mainly just saying like ideas and how to involve him in the movie in that, like, you know, I would love for him to walk back in the behind yep. the, that would have been the best. That would have been yeah, the best. Like, we had an idea, like him just kind of walking behind the shot. Sorry, I just had I just had chicken cutlets and macaroni and cheese. So that's why I'm burping a little bit. It's okay, no, it's <laughs> it fine. Like, burping. Listen, this show's theme is whatever happens happens. You burp. I'm not even like burping. It's just like an <laughs> interjection. Oh my, it's yeah. totally fine. Go. Yeah, it, 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 it's well, it's almost welcome if you want to. Like now, I, I don't, now I don't want to. That's why I'm <laughs> apologizing. Yeah, yeah, but if now you decide to just start burping, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really even burp. I don't drink anything carbonated. But right. Uh, okay. Anyway. Well, today. Yeah. So um, the original ending, Tommy. Go over what we thought would be a really good ending for the movie. Oh, with the, so the the Bill Murray, you know, the opening, the sequence uh, with the the mask and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I thought like what if whatever conclusion they come to at the end, like maybe like 
there was a scene where like Bill was wearing that mask and he took the mask off. Love it. You know, yeah. but those are sort of things that it's like, you know, like he was, Bill was on like the Today Show talking about uh, yeah, like, awesome. you know, would they, you know, the Bill Murray stories and they showed like a picture of me and Bill and all that sort of stuff and they're like, oh, what, what about this documentary? And I was like, God, they asked me to be in it, but like a movie about myself, that's something I do when I pass away. And even a friend of mine who's friends with Bill, they're like, seriously, it's a good movie. And Bill's like, you know, I've heard about it, but you know, I'll watch it when I get the flu. You know, it's like, it's one of those- oh, Well, Robert, here you go. This is the perfect time for Bill yeah, Murray to watch the totally movie. Yeah. Yeah. The world yeah. has the flu. So well, this is- He like, doesn't yeah. have it. It's just, yeah. no, I trying to stay away from it, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah. Everybody knows it exists too. Yeah, it's cool. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I want to ask you about that. I'll get, I'll get to that. But I wanted to ask you. Uh, so, but you did get the number to talk to him because that, that's it. That's a start of the movie where you start calling. Um, yeah, yeah. How much of that? I mean, I'm sure it's you know you you did. A, how many calls did you make? Did you just make one or two or three hundred and ninety? <laughs> <laughs> I think I did a baker's dozen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the goal was to get him to re to reply to one of these freaking calls, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, like I really there wasn't a goal, you know. It would be like yeah. that. It would be great if he re replied, but like, like I just have a you know punk rock sort of mentality where it's like, well, I'm just I'm never asking anyone permission to make these movies. I'm just right. going to do it, and if you want to be a part of it, that's great. You yeah, know? that's cool. Um, and so you, we never did hear back from him ever until the uh, interview. Uh, I yeah you know, I I never I never heard back from Bill I heard you know I've heard things you know what I mean Ooh. like like Joel Joel's brother he watched it he liked it you know I but I never asked Joel like hey did Bill watch it because it's no this is weird yeah it's like the wrestler yeah. mentality in a way yeah right? exactly it doesn't it doesn't matter to me because like I mean I joked around about whenever we do these Q and A's where it was like uh, the Hollywood version of this is doing a Q and A people are digging whatever they're clapping. Bill's in the background. Only I can see him. He gives me a thumbs up and just disappears. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's the way it, it kind of ends. But in reality, it's like we made the movie. We're extremely happy with the way the movie is. It's connected with people. I mean, South by Southwest sold out every single screening. Hot yeah. Ducks every single screening. There's like 700 people in those theaters. Went to London for the second time in my life and sold out all those crowds. Like it did really well. Our version of well, and it connected with a lot of people and. That's all we really wanted to do. You know, whether Bill sees it, I mean, that's, I mean, as a fan, that'd be great, but that wasn't the goal. Right. Yeah. No. Um, and you start getting some of these stories. Um, is there any of this, which of the stories to you was the moment sort of when you felt like, okay, I got, I, I got something here now. Well, I mean, the Austin, Texas stuff, it's like uh, South by Southwest. Yeah. When we got that footage. Uh, so, so, there's a South by Southwest house party where Bill Murray comes over. There's a band the like, and they're playing this this guy Jordan's house, and it's great, right? Mm -hmm. And the only footage that's ever online is like a 30 minute performance from the like the band, and Bill Murray just happens to be in like the left corner of the screen, just kind of playing the tambourine and enjoying the show. But it's not like one of those popular stories like the dishwasher, the, the karaoke it hasn't really gone viral. So like when I connect the connected with the guy on uh, YouTube. He's like, dude, I, I have all this other footage that I just never put out online. I just kind of been waiting for the right thing. So like, he's giving me this stuff that no one really seen before where he's eating lasagna in the guy's kitchen. just kind of like <laughs> hanging out, bringing in, uh, like he's being the roadie, kind of bringing in the speakers and stuff like that. And then going in and then talking to these guys. And like, you're just talking to someone who really enjoys about what they're talking about. Like everyone is smiling from ear to ear. So you're yeah. smiling from ear to ear. So like that, like, I mean, and plus I've, I've never been to Austin, Texas. So like, I really enjoyed the barbecue there. So, so when you went to other, you went to Austin, Texas for South by Southwest before you were in South by Southwest, but you didn't go during I South. Went, I went to Austin, Texas to interview the guys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but then I went there for South by Southwest. Right. So it's two different moments. But when you went the first time to do the interview with the guy, there's some great like shots of South by Southwest. That's just stock. Oh, so interesting fact, right? Yeah. So when we played at South by Southwest, we just used YouTube clips and all that sort of stuff. Stuff mm -hmm. we didn't really like. It was like, I mean, they gave us, uh, it was like, I think it was like 2010. I think it was 2010 when that happened. So then we have all this sort of like, you know, four by three uh, South by Southwest footage. 
nothing really too crazy, just kind of like a bunch of people in a rocker, or like there's nothing much happening, right? Right, because a so lot of when, it just you got to pull from whatever you can find, right? Right, so but when we went to South by Southwest, we brought our camera and we filmed the event and then took those pictures from the event when we pro- played and popped them into those like three missing oh, nice. pieces. Yeah. Oh, so, so those were added to, for the Netflix thing. <laughs> yeah, so a real release, you're seeing like, 2018 South by South clips. I mean, we don't see the year on it or anything. No, no, no. I get, I get where you're going. But we just interchange these like sort of like boring Austin, Texas shots with more exciting Austin, Texas shots. Movie magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I w- wanted to ask you: Do you roll with the crew, uh, like a DP? What is your, what is your, who, who are you rolling with when you're going into different places? Are you shooting yourself? So some of the Price of Fame, I shot myself. You know, because let me I- tell you something, Peter. I roll deep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it doesn't. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's all minimal stuff. Yeah. Bill, Bill Murray was probably the biggest crew I've had in, which was like three other people. Yeah. You know, it's uh, me and Derek, which is always me and Derek. When uh, Waldo uh, or Sam, it was sometimes just me and Derek, um, Derek Kunzer. Uh, and then uh, for Murray, we had uh, Max Colucci and John Dean. Uh, Max being a producer on set and John being audio. But sometimes it was three of us. Sometimes it was four of us. You know, um, we made sure all four of us were there in London and Scotland because we've, you know, you know, we wanted to enjoy some of that haggis. Sure. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> mm, haggis. <laughs> awesome, man. So Ray, as you're seeing some of the foot, I'm. Are you seeing? How are you seeing footage, or did you just see a final cut? So, so Tommy would update things um, pretty regularly. You know, I, again, I, I'm very when it when it comes to working, I'm like, listen, man. It's your idea. You go off and do your thing. When you're ready to show me some footage, show me some footage. Like, because you know, Peter, you and I are working on some stuff. Yeah, we're working and on a cool thing. Just kind of do your own, do your thing, and let me see it when it gets close to being done, or when you got scenes or whatever. So, Tom would upload some stuff to Dropbox or whatever, and I would look at it and give back some notes. But really, it was it was. I don't use Dropbox. Or whatever. I don't know what you do. <laughs> you know, what do you get paid? I don't know how to use Dropbox. I hate, uh, yeah, I hate Dropbox, by the way. Yeah. Uh, what, what was it? Like we transfer? No. Oh, yes, I do like We transfer. I do like We transfer. We transfer. Well, now I'll tell you, a friend of mine, Dominic Savilli, who does is goes into oh, the yeah, yeah. yeah, he uses file mail. Oh my God. You got it, you got it up to fifty gigs for free. Sorry. <laughs> free plug for file mail. Oh wow. Uh, hey, he, um, yeah, blew my mind. Anyway, so he would he would post stuff. I would watch it. And um, we just kind of go back and forth, give notes, and what do you what do you think the ending is like? What is it? And it's pretty pretty easy going. You know, we, we have a good working relationship and a good friendship, so it's it's good. You know. Now, I mean, in the Price of Fame, when I did that, you know, uh, there the movie sets place in the '80s when Ted DiBiase is a big time superstar wrestler, and I don't have footage of him at the bar, right? So I'm like, I wish I did, but uh, I, that'd be a whole other talk. But, um, you know, so you're, you're struggling with, well, how do you, what do you use for B-roll? What are you using to show this? So we mm-hmm. shot some recreations, which, you know, now I don't know if you, I'm sure, Tom, you've seen The Dark Side of the Ring. And I think it's a phenomenal uh, show. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Um, how did you address, like, when someone's going to tell you a story, you don't have footage necessarily of, Bill Murray doing this. Sometimes, yes, you do. You have like a, a, a cell phone camera or whatever, however that played out. But what did you, what did you walk through with some of that? Yeah, I mean, we were really, really, you know, I don't like to use the word lucky because luck doesn't exist. But um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, a lot of the stories we would interview people who had footage, you know, like the kickball story, you know, the only picture that's online is that one picture, you know, but they, they had the cell phone stuff that we really like, Great. We, I knew how to milk it. I knew how to kind of edit around it. Yeah. And a lot of these people are so entertaining that we just like we didn't necessarily need it as, as yeah. well, you know. Um, so uh, you know the shorter stories are the people who have the shorter amounts of footage, you know. And the only times that we kind of needed a little reenactments or anything like to set up or like maybe the the Shangri La. Um, yes. We had we had footage. So it's like a it's a bar in Austin, Texas called the Shangri La, and Bill Murray gets behind the bar. I saw well, that. Yeah. yeah. The Bill Murray behind the bar footage is phenomenal. But like to set that up, it's you need a, lot a little setup. Head. Yeah. So we need we did a little bit of reenactments and that sort of thing. And um, how do you find did, a? What do you do? How do you find a Bill a guy that looks like Bill Murray to go sit in a bar and just shoot this? 
Oh, we, we don't. We just made a mask. Yeah. We, had a, we had a Bill Murray mask made. <laughs> so oh, this is freaking awesome. That's the mask. <laughs> Did you put this on some guy? Is it you or who is it? Uh, it's, it's an actor, Brian Gallagher. Actually, yeah. you know the opening sequence where there's a campfire scene, the guy yeah. with the beard talking? That's, that's this guy. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, Very it doesn't cool. look all that good here, but like it, you know, <laughs> when, when put together, but if you ever. First of all, it, it looks great on camera. Like in the Netflix doc, I thought, like, yeah. Damn, they nailed that Bill Murray. <laughs> they got the Netflix, Bill Murray. <laughs> these, are, these are taxidermy eyes. You can't right. even see right. out of it. There's no way to see out of there. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but did you ever see uh, Dogma? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Buddy Christ? Yeah. Okay. Well, he made this guy. Oh, that's and, awesome. Uh, Buddy that's pretty good, this. man. And then he did our claymation for Santa. So I mean, this is all the this is all a Dave Deneen yeah. <laughs> art gallery in my office. Very, very cool, man. He popped that on the actor, and then the actor was like sitting at the bar talking, and that's kind of yeah. how they they reenacted. Is that, that a wrestling chair? Yes. Is that a wrestling? What is yeah, it? What wrestle? Yeah. That's Battleground. That was front row seats. Paul Heyman got me uh, front row seats <laughs> at Battleground. It was the. Uh, Jinder Mahal versus Randy Orton in the uh, big time match. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very cool. I love that. Um, we could probably do a whole podcast about wrestling one day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so can a million other people. <laughs> <laughs> and they do, and they do very well, by the way. No, no, no. Um, I'm just saying, there's just so many wrestling podcasts. Yeah, but no, like I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm I didn't mean as a negative thing. I'm sure you're very great, but I'm just saying, there's just so many no, wrestling I know, podcasts. I know you mean. I mean, like, I, mean, like, I, mean, like, I, mean, like, I would love to talk to you more about. Your wrestling. I'm down to talk wrestling. <laughs> experiences, and we like can't it. go to a bar and hang out and do that. So it will I be. I do have a wrestling me. belt over here. When I graduated high school, I, I bought the Attitude Bear, uh, Era Attitude Era Championship belt. Yeah, you said you hung out with King Kong Bundy a bunch. I I was pretty good friends with him for a moment in time. He has a very short span of like uh, being friendly, and then sometimes it doesn't go so well. Um, yeah. I I only shot with him once. We were supposed to shoot with him again, but it didn't work out. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, Christmas was a good guy. Funniest, funniest dude, man. Just yeah. like, just, just a real deal. Yeah, I want to do, uh, for a while, I teased with some of my wrestling friends to do, because, you know, I mean, there's some King Kong Bundy stories of how he reacted to situations. So I thought about doing a little short called King Kong Bundy stories. Which, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, um, because Tommy Dreamer has a really good one. So anyway. Um, Yes. Yeah, he, oh, he's Dreamer is by far my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, Ray. Ray, are you into wrestling or not really? I was a huge wrestling fan back in the day. I uh, I was at the Stephanie McMahon marriage to the Undertaker at the Harvard Civic Center. In wow. New York. And I met The Rock. I was like a huge Rock fan, and before my dad passed away, he set up this kind of meeting um for me to meet the rock and then my dad passed away never met him and then i met him it was just this whole thing uh, yeah. so i was like a huge huge wrestling fan and then i kind of got out of it when i went to cooking school and all that and then trying yeah, to get back to by that your cooking it. school days i mean we never i i mean we hung out a couple of times we never talked about that yeah oh they're they're, they're not very interesting <laughs> <laughs> i almost cut my thumb off that's the best thing i've got <laughs> nice yeah um okay so then you you're getting deeper into this film and uh you start putting it together at some point, you have to feel like, "Hey, man, I got, I, I've, I've got, a, I've got something here. These stories are very interesting." Um, when do you feel like, I guess, like we're getting close to a final product of what this film is looking like? I guess I don't. There's, I guess, there's a romantic idea of, I think I got something here. Like I don't think that ever really happens for me. I think if it ever happens, it shortly changed the next day with, "Oh no." Definitely. Yeah, I got <laughs> you. Know, you. Like, I, you know, I remember with Santa Claus, I go, I feel like, you know, there's a movie here and it's up to me to mess it up. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm never like, so like, I guess you're saying, yes, there's like, there's certain moments in Santa Claus, like when like uh, Santa Jim is crying because his boyfriend can't be to the Texas Bear Roundup. Like, I'm like, oh, I got something there, you know? So that, I, I guess, yes, you're right. But then I go, I, mean, I just, I just hope it's still good. You know, like, I hope it's, it's like that you had to be there moment. Like you hope it's not like, you hope it's as good you know, as. Coming across well on camera as it does, as it feels maybe. Is that what yes, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because you, you go, oh man, that's great. And you look at it, sometimes you go, it doesn't feel as good, you know, so, but then vice versa, you know? Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. 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 
Um, yeah, and I, even in, when I did The Price of Fame, there was moments where I was like, that felt so good. And then I would look, did you do most of your own editing on this? I did all the editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy's like a full service. Uh, yeah, well, because I don't like anybody else to, 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 to edit something that, you know, this is tough. I mean, other people do it and I understand, I could see, I would love to get to that point, you know, but it's like um, so much of editing is finding the story and it's like you have to be confident in the story. And I feel like a lot of times, like, I know it sounds weird, but it's like, I feel like the movie, like, uh, you know, it speaks to you in some sense where it's like, you know, you're discovering something there, you yeah. know, if you're not there digging, then like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know? Like, yeah, I, I feel like it's, a, I, and I do think, I do agree with you. I feel like if you have somebody that you're connected with, that's a part of your team. And I think a lot of uh, directors have this, you can trust in their ability to edit the story. It's a narrative. I think it's different, right? Because it's all oh, totally, totally laid out. Exactly. But in documentary, man, I don't know. I feel like the doc, the editor makes the movie in documentary. It's tough, man. I mean, like I, you know, a lot of people I've talked to who don't edit their own stuff, they're like, oh, well, I sit there, you know, and a lot of times it's like, they're not the one physically editing. And like, there's a lot of person that kind of like, well, they'll, they'll have these conversations and someone then goes and does it. And then the, the director comes I get in. that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the way to do it, you know, but... Um, yeah, like, where you don't have to push the buttons and look through the footage, but I feel like, as yeah, a director I mean, or producer, you're finding moments inside the moments. Like, I loved that you left in, like, the dude swatting the fly, right? I love that... <laughs> I love that yeah. you even some of this shit that's just, like, an editor I, would skip behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, love, I love that stuff. That's, that, to me, makes me laugh. You know, like, there's, like... Um, I think there's a scene in I Am Santa Claus where you see the um, the bathroom stall uh, of some Santa using the bathroom and like you see like his red pants on the bottom, you know? And it's like, that's, that's mm. the stuff I, I, I dream about, you know? Like that, these are great shots. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, who cares absolutely. about like drone shots or whatever all that stuff, even though we have them. But it's like these small little moments where like, I have like, an old man looking this close to a laptop, you know, like that's to me is hilarious. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so hey, real quick, I got a question for you. Go ahead. So at one point, was there any way you got to put on the real million dollar belt? Uh, no, because that is in a, in the warehouse. That's at WWE. He doesn't have it at all? He has a replica. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> he, yeah, of course he has a replica. And I saw, but I did see, um, I did see the suits. The old, oh. the old million dollar man suits, yeah. Because Mick doesn't have anything. Mick, Mick's, Mick's classic line is, I, I have the way I walk to remind me I was a wrestler. <laughs> that was a good line, though. That guy's been he was so good, and, and he was so good in Price of Fame, too. You know what's oh. funny? is like, Mick doesn't make sense necessarily for Price of Fame. Uh, they don't have a connection. He wasn't from that era. But I wanted the perspective of a, a newer wrestler that, you know, saw Ted and what whatever. And... Um, he gave such good interview stuff that he, you know, I got to see his process. It was interesting to see the wrestlers process in, inside a documentary to see how their brain thinks. Like with, even with Jim Ross, where like uh, we, we, we spent a couple of days with him and uh, we, we, we did a thing because we did a fathom release too for the price of fame. So we had Jim Ross record a bunch of shit just to help an interview process. And, um, we would give him the questions beforehand and you can literally see him sort of like take a second to formulate how is Jim Ross going to say it, you know, mm -hmm. and then well, spit it out and be fucking Jim Ross. Do you know what I, you know what I mean? Like so yeah. good at it. Yeah. I, uh, we did a Kickstarter for Santa Claus and um, down in my basement, uh, Mick cut a promo as mankind. Oh, and like so I, cool. I watched him like get it going, you know, and like, kind of get the shakes and all that sort of stuff and yeah. you just kind of let out the squeal and you're like, I'm filming this. This is my footage. <laughs> yeah. like, I feel like that's, I mean, I feel like that's, a, I mean, I know we saw that in sort of um, the movie that he, the other movies in, I just watched that again behind, what was it? Oh, Beyond, Beyond the Mat. Mat. Yeah. Mm, Beyond the Mat's fantastic. Like Barry Blossom was a consulting producer on Santa and like he was, he's still like one of the guys, like when I wanted to make a documentary, I reached out to a handful of people and he was one of them. And uh, he is, he's amazing. 
Yeah, I would like to get him on here to talk about uh, Beyond the Map because I just rewatched it. It's now on Netflix, so I don't know if that's a new oh, thing. Oh, cool. oh, nice. Yeah, yeah but I, re- I caught it back up on there. And, man, you forget, like, do a revisit on Beyond the Map because... I don't need to. I watch it all the time. <laughs> no, I'm just like, I mean, seeing those guys at, in those... Because, you know, it's been some years since... Oh, yeah, well, that was not, what, 96? You yeah. Know, the, rock, the Rock really wasn't the Rock. I mean, you see The Rock kind of becoming The Rock. Yeah. Yeah, and then Vince, you know, Vince still, I mean, like, he just started to become a, the heel, you know? like Right, like, he's, 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 he's in between of Vince the owner and Vince the character sometimes yeah. in, in that doc. Okay. I, I, mean, I love that doc, man. I wish, you know, I know that, they, that, they, that Vince hates that doc. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, because it's a control thing, you know? I mean, but, like, um, what, what, do you, what do you consider your five favorite documentaries? Oh, that's a tough one, man. That's in there, though. Definitely. Oh, yeah. In terms of wrestling documentaries, like Wrestling with Shadows is another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to be know, a big Bret Hart you know, fan. Like, you know, what I, my favorite part of the dark side of the ring yeah. um, was when Scott Hall goes, it's all work. Like, the, yeah. those guys knew it. And to me, like, I don't know if I believe that angle was a work, like the whole Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart thing. Yeah. yeah. But, like, I don't know. I, I, I just feel like it just felt so con- – you know, like, there's – there's was it um, – oh, God, what's the one documentary about the, the guys in the wheelchairs that do the, the sports game? Um, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, I'm gonna, was it, it, Murderball. Ray, Ray, Ray and I are both supposed to be your lifeline here, and we both just – Yeah. No, I, I knew you both wouldn't have the answer, so I didn't even ask. No, it's uh, Murderball. Murderball. Yeah. murderball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and that was one of those movies where you like you're generally like finding this angle I and mean, there's a huge like sort of heel turn in that movie but it felt genuine whereas like dark uh wrestling with shadows just felt like it was so convenient that they're all there you i know? agree i, don't, I understand what you're saying there's something yeah. weird about it i mean it was a good movie i'm not gonna say anything's bad but there was like definitely it just felt too polished and didn't feel as gritty for being around a gritty sort of moment, you know? Totally. Um, it's interesting. I asked him. I drove Bret Hart from a hotel to um, an autograph signing because it's a long story, but it was because of the DiBiase thing. And we talked about all of it. And I asked him that thing. But I didn't say, like, dude, was it a work? I said Kevin yeah, Nash. Yeah. I said, Scott Hall said it was a work. That's what I said. Like, because they, they had been saying that in shoot interviews for a while or whatever. And he was oh, like, well, how would Scott Hall know if it was a work or not? Uh, <laughs> you know? He wasn't even fucking there. How would he fucking know? You know? Yeah. And he these was adamant beans, that it was not a work. jelly beans are amazing, by the way. I just want to say, these jelly beans are fantastic. We definitely devol- d- uh, divert it to wrestling. Sorry. But I, feel, I felt oh, like I that was going to happen with us. Yeah. Well, I mean, I asked about what your five favorite documentaries were, and somehow we're talking about... <laughs> yeah, I don't mind, though. I love wrestling, man. I'm, I'm obsessed with it, so... Uh, mm. I mean, how did you, uh, real quick, before we get back to the movie, how did you feel about seeing WrestleMania this year? Um, I really loved the Bray Wyatt match. You Same. Know, like, I mean, that was phenomenal. Um, I mean, the Undertaker like, thing, to me, felt a little campy. It felt no. a little goofy no, to it was, me. It was so good. It was so good. I People loved it. say that. I understand that they think that that was good, but it felt to me that it was, like, the, the talking I don't like the talking necessarily when the guys are like, oh, you're going to say that like, you got, un- you got the fucking undertaker, you know, call me, what's up, Alan? Like, just, just stop talking to each other. You don't need dialogue in this shit. Just beat the fucking shit out of each other. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I love that you disagree. disagree. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Um, no, I thought the cinematic experiences of both of them were way better than people in an empty arena. I didn't say I liked the Undertaker match. You know, I'm just saying the Bray Wyatt match is great. Oh, no, that was fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I think ultimately, WrestleMania, they did the best they could. I mean, that's that's all you can ask for. You know, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's going to be weird when you look at the large-scale WrestleManias and see this one weird WrestleMania, you know? We had a great podcast uh, for, uh, what's it, Conrad. Do you listen to any of the, his podcasts, Conrad? And no, I really, friends? like, I listen to, like, three podcasts. It's, like, Marin. Um, I love his. Yeah, his is good. Yeah, yeah. The Office Ladies. And then, like, you know, 
uh, Pete Holmes and maybe like Nerdist, you know? Okay, was something to wrestle with Bruce Prichard and Conrad Thompson? I don't have time for that. It was three hours long for one episode. I can't do it. <laughs> but, I was uh, at WrestleMania. It's with, good. Uh, Lawrence yeah. Taylor and Bam Bam Bigelow. I was at that. Oh, that's oh, yeah? the eleven. Fuck. I was, yeah. I was in that. I was at that one when I was a kid. I remember my dad got seats up in the. They have like um up in the top of the arena. They had seats where you like sit and they bring you food. Because my dad was trying to get the garbage yeah. account to the place that the it was at it was at the Hartford Civic Center, and um, they're like they're trying to win him over, so they gave him really good seats up top with all this. It was insane. It was so I That's remember awesome. it very vividly. It was awesome. All right, I want to get us back because people are he's from the east. Yeah, yeah, he's from the east. That's right. Bam, bam. Um, I want to ask you about um, when you 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 finally get the movie done and you I mean you have a copy and you start and do you start and how do you get to the film festival process what is for you for filmmakers that are watching what is that process like for you where you're like hey I'm gonna start submitting this shit are you submitting it do you have somebody else that's submitting it for you what is that like for you yeah I mean I don't have a good answer I just I have some of my executive producers do that for me and it just works out you know but like but like, you know, our Santa Claus movie, you know, uh, it didn't, it, it didn't, you know, like we, we got into Doc NYC, which is this really awesome New York. Uh, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but we had to, we, we had to like drop out because we were on Netflix like the day or two before the festival right. started. So like the only big, I mean, I was just say big, but the only festival we played for Santa was uh, the Hollywood Film Festival, which is just like a regional sort of festival. I mean, it was nice. You know, Kevin Smith was in the audience. It was really cool and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, um, Bill Murray, you know, we're in South by Southwest, Hot Dogs, BFI, or Tribeca for Ghost Heads, Tribeca for Waldo. You know, like we've been able to kind of like build these sort of relationships, relationships around people who have had these festivals now. So... Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. And uh, obviously the re- reactions were very good at um, South by Southwest. What is that feeling like for you? Oh, it's phenomenal. I mean, I've, I, I videotape the moment before the credits hit always. So I can always remember the audience reaction. That's very know? cool. Did you, get uh, me, did you get me booing? Pardon me? Did you get me booing when we we're at South by? I was sitting next to you. Did you, did you get me booing? No, I, I did uh, videotape you going, I love you, man. I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Love that. Uh, <laughs> man, it was a great movie. What do you want from me? Is that the first time you saw it in full or had you seen a couple of versions of it prior to? I seen a couple of so like uh, I mean uh, for Ray. Oh. I had seen a couple of versions of it before South Five, so But wasn't it different when you're in that is that the first time you see it in an audience setting? That was definitely the first time I saw an audience setting. It's a, it's a completely different beast entirely when you're sitting there and there's people in the audience that have Bill Murray masks they gave them and <laughs> you know, there's like a Q&A after. But like right when the movie ends and people are cheering and everything, you're just like, okay, that's like, this is like a very unique feeling that not a lot of people get to experience. So I was like, just trying to soak it in um, because it was just like, you know, Tommy and everybody worked so hard on the movie and, I, you know, to, to that, that feeling of like, wow, we, we did something really cool and this is an awesome thing and it just felt really well good. at that point though you guys are like okay so we we hit this market right we did we did this amazing thing uh we got to south by southwest we have this great audience reaction at what point do you know okay netflix is interested in this film uh let's see the movie is it right there? after that or no. is there a, is there a process of like fuck what's net no, uh, it's a process we have a sales agent you know uh we were with uh, CAA and um, uh, Endeavor. And yeah, it took a little bit, you know? I mean, like, you have to remember too, like that was the beginning of the change, you know, where as a year prior, you know, movies were selling for like good, like big chunks of money. I mean, like, for, for example, Icarus sold for $5 million. You know I mean? Mm-hmm. If we're not Icarus, we're not Russian spies or anything right. like that. Uh, but you know, um, you know, we, I guess we were in Scotland, but, uh, no, uh, but like, it was different. Like, so we were South by Southwest in March, South by Southwest happened right. I'm sorry. Sundance happened right before us. And there was this big to do about Netflix and Hulu. We're not acquiring things the way they used to. Um, you know, we're, on, we're starting on the ground floor. So it was really like, we were like the first festival after that. And it was kind of like a shakeup of where everything was going to land and how, 
people were going to be buying movies. So it was a really, it was the beginning of that change. Um, where and I feel like that's even another change now post coronavirus. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, there's definitely going to be one. But like, I mean, the thing is, there's always change. There's always something. Sure. You know? And mm-hmm. but like that particular time is when. Netflix and Hulu really were like, no, we're just going to start making these things our own, you know? So it was, just, it was just different. You know, there was no like, you know, Clerks 1994, uh, you know, going to the coffee house and bidding with the wine scenes or any, like, you know, like you're not, no. you know. I, you, I get what you're saying. It was, it was, it's kind of because like, it's like, listen, we can make this ourselves, not necessarily your movie, but right. we can make a version make of this. Documentaries, yeah. Yeah. And we don't, you know, but here's what we have. You want this or not? Was it kind of like that? No, it's just, it's just different. It's just like it's just like you know, you know, Ghost Dad. It's like we didn't even go through a distributor. We sold directly to uh, Netflix licensing for yes. three years. You know, like uh, you know, it's just it's just constantly different. And yeah. you know, your your sales agents. You know, we have like the best the round. You know, uh, and it's just it was just different. You know, it was you know when I remember watching like like when i think of festivals i think of like the like golden era of like tarantino uh Kevin yeah. smith uh you know like that sort of indie like early 90s uh stuff whereas like there was these crazy bidding wars and then some of those movies still exist but they're mainly a narrative you know like yeah. i y- you see some of these things in documentaries but it's so like rare and a lot of these people are walking into festivals i've already been sold and stuff like that like you know, we are truly independent movies. So it's just, it's just, it's just different is what I'm yeah. saying. There was, we didn't know for like a couple months until afterwards that we, when we signed, I think, I think. Well, where do you, how do you feel when something like that's going on with this, this sort of like, I don't know, man, we had that great moment. We got hot dogs, got this stuff. As a filmmaker, that's tough. That part's tough. Well, There's I, a lot of waiting around. I but, remember we were at South by Southwest for a month. I'm sorry, a week. And um, I turned to Max our producer and I said um it's it's always difficult going back to real life after this yeah you know like and that's that's always my thing it's like you know you're you're at these festivals uh you have like a PR team behind you kind of like telling you where to go who to talk to um you're having all these big screenings and people applaud you and they want to ask you questions and they tell you the movie's good and all that sort of stuff and you just kind of go back to like real life where it's like you're just kind of, you know, going back at it, you know? And I, I try to like take stock of remembering what it feels like to be in this to, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if I mentioned the question, but like, oh, I, just, definitely, I, man. Yeah. I just, I just, I'm very aware that it's something it's, it's a, it's a wave, you know, and you're just mm-hmm. at the height of that wave and then it goes crashing down to eventually come back up. Yeah. When it goes and it does eventually, you do eventually get to Netflix. What's that process like? And, um, you know, obviously the movie is phenomenal. So, you know, what is the reaction that you're getting and what is what what kind of experience are you getting with that? I feel like I've answered too much. Ray, you, you want to go for this? <laughs> um, I could answer this. Sure. <clears throat> so, you know, um, for us. While you're answering, I'm going to get more scotch. Okay. <laughs> um when we were, uh, so we, you know, we had the movie, um, it came out of South by Southwest, and so that was in March. Eventually, the movie came out in, you know, September, October, so there's a big lull there when we're getting, like Tommy said, kind of coming down from that high. So <laughs> we, um, we work on a deal um, with the company that bought Murray, which was um, Gravitas, and they said, hey, you know, we can probably turn around and sell this to Netflix, and, you know, it, it, you know I think there's a lot of interest there, and we said, Okay, yeah, let's you know, let's see what Netflix is willing to to kind of offer, and and um, you know, obviously having a project on Netflix is a huge deal. Amazing, they're, yeah. They're, um, they're, they just surpassed Disney yesterday right. in terms of what they're worth, and so anyway, you know, um, finding out that Netflix is like, yeah, we're gonna we'll take this, and and their structure is very different. They you know, they pay you quarterly. You're signing a three year exclusive deal, or you know, three year deal to have your project on there and everything. So. Um, you know, it was nice, you know, we, we work out the deal with them and then, uh, you know, we get it on Netflix. Uh, like I think a week after it came out on VOD and on Apple, um, like a week or two after that, it came out on Netflix. So 90 days. Oh, 90 days. Yeah. So three months. Okay. <laughs> so I, feel, I feel like there would be a, a period when he said 90 days, when he said a week or two, I was like, no, it's gotta be about 90 days. Yeah. I was drinking so much. I'm sorry. So it came okay. out 90 days after. And, um, 
it's it's really cool to have a project on Netflix to to kind of to, to once you hit Netflix and it, it's that you know because you guys are when it hit Netflix, you know, it it's man, it's a thing, right? You get right up on that, you know, that right the the first things to check out or recommendations. Yes, no, I mean like you know this this that would have been my third doc on Netflix. You know, Sam and Ghost has both were on Netflix before, and they definitely. Yes. Well, Netflix evolved almost in that pro- in that time, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, like I remember you could actually at one point for Santa see how many people would like it. Like they during Santa, like Mick Foley was on the Daily Show and he was talking about it, and you could see the numbers that skyrocket, you know. Mm-hmm. And they just stopped that, you know. Um, but I mean, the thing about it is like you have Bill Murray's name in the title, and you didn't, you know, it just you're going to get a lot of attention you totally. know? And, and then it's good, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then like, so it just, it doesn't even matter. Like, you know, we did very well on iTunes and we're number one documentary on iTunes for an hour. Um, <laughs> and uh, Let's put that on the cover of the DVD. Well, Price of Fame was the number one documentary on Amazon for like an hour. So that was, <laughs> it was amazing. And, yeah. and, and then it, it, it did it really well. And then Netflix, you're like, so many people are talking about it. There's a lot of like hype, and you, you're getting on these lists of like best movies of this and all that stuff. To really, where we got to, it was like an instant watcher website where you could see the tracking. We were number one on that for a second. But oddly enough, the most people. I get that say they watched it or on the plane, and I've never had a movie on the plane before. Oh man, people like was, so was it on the plane? Do you, yeah, you, yeah. Oh, that's pretty you fucking crazy. Airline, like, I get texts from people. I'm flying a four. Look at this movie. It's on the plane. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Ten people. I'm like, wow. It, it is definitely a weird feeling. Like, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. That's that's pretty. I feel impressive. like we were on. I feel like we were on American Airlines, but some people said, you know, I forget what the American one was. But we were overseas as well, you know, and so a lot of people who would fly overseas would see it. We were on TBS in Spain and France, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. It's it's just it's you know, I I again I think I turned to Max because we were at Hot Docs in Toronto, and I was like, it's never going to be this easy to fill the seats again, you know, because we did nothing. We like we literally didn't. I mean, like South by Southwest, we had promotion, but promotion yeah. was to do interviews outside of the festival whereas we didn't get any sort of we didn't do any real promotion uh to get people in the seats you know and we sold everything out in and hot dogs there was a line line across the street it was 700 people every night and That's incredible man yeah and it was just we just knew it was never i mean i shouldn't say easy because it was a very difficult movie to make but like it was uh it was never going to be easy to to put something in there and go all right night now come now come to it Right. You know, like, what was the most difficult thing about making the movie? Just making sure it wasn't a bunch of online vignettes, you know, like making sure there was something to say in it, you know, whereas like, you, you know, you're, you're doing the, you know, your Ted DiBiase movie, you're telling the story of Ted DiBiase's life, sure. you know, Santa Claus, you're following these people's slides and you're seeing them exist. Whereas Bill Murray, you know, no one's, re- no one's coming back, you know, you're interviewing, the people from South Carolina, you're interviewing people from Texas, you're interviewing people from New York, and they all have their individual stories. It can very right. well be a cheap sort of video uh, vignettes of like, here's an episode, here's an episode, here's an episode. Totally. Maybe nothing, but here's an episode or something like that. Well, so the real you, challenge, go ahead. No, no, I don't want to interrupt you. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, you, well, you did. <laughs> I was just going to say the hardest part for me was working with you. It was a joke. <laughs> go ahead. I love it. No, but uh, that that was it. Was just it was just making sure there was a it was cutting down on the meat. You know, like I I very much like ham it up. Uh, so I had to cut down that because it's so it was a mistake. I think a lot of people do where when they put themselves in the fe- uh, in a movie, they just think everyone likes them. You know, like I know uh, my friends like me, but I also know there's a lot of people who probably don't like me. You know, and like I made sure to edit it for those people. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, I want to ask you about that too. What is the decision like to put yourself? I think it's you have to be in the movie. I think that thing about the vignettes that you just talked about, you being in the movie is the thing that sort of breaks that up. There yeah. because it doesn't become, oh, this is this guy's story from uh, Austin or whatever. It becomes you are sort of this guide on the journey, right? Um, yeah. Well, I be- I believe in like the way you learn something sometimes is through stories, you know what I mean? Like, not to be like, 
anything anti whatever but like that's what's so good about the, the bible you know you're learning through stories through fables or whatever it is you know and there's a point you know so it's like with this i'm not comparing our movie to the bible but like there's it's like biblical to go out tonight <laughs> like, any religious just, person watching go it's a biblical movie <laughs> can you tell how many people are watching it goes up and down you know what i mean where, where are we at right now good old zero no i'm just kidding <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we got about. Not gonna pay me the number. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Well, this oh, is like anything else, though. It takes a nice life afterwards. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Um, no, uh, I just I do really enjoy playing the heel, so I apologize. That's okay. Um, I don't mind. I prefer heels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and it was just kind of making that point. Like you know, you just want to like you're you're looking at all these stories on a whiteboard. And you're you're putting them together, and how does it make sense where they're building off of each other? Like, okay, well, South Carolina guy says this. You're building a thought here, and then you're building on here. And then Austin, Texas, talks about living in the moment. Okay, we're talking about that there. Then let's switch to someone who's like a um, an author or uh, someone like that to build off that. And you're just kind of trying to build to a moment. And am I here and all that sort of stuff? But like, when I'm involved in it, like that's a thing I don't like to do because you know, Morgan Spurlock and Michael Moore, they do it phenomenal. But like, right. I, could, I could name you a list off the air of people who have not, you know? Um, and I just didn't want to be a part of that. And um, it was I'm very- I'm happy fun. that you're in it, man. Yeah, I mean, it it's the only different. one I wanted to do it with, you know? Yeah. Do you put yourself in all of them or do you put them when it makes sense for you to be in it? I mean, I, I've directed three documentaries. I've only been in one. Yeah, so, I mean- that makes sense. It made sense for that story. I think it's the thing that changed it from being vignette sort of what you said to a, a, you know, a journey that we all can go on with you. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, Santa Claus was a very follow character doc. Bill Murray was a, you know, director in there investigating doc. And yeah. then Wal Waldo, which is, it is 420 today. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, Waldo yeah. Weed uh, available now on iTunes. Uh, you know, that was very much a, like a found footage, one single character story, you know, which I'd never had a single character story before. I want to do a whole episode about Waldo and Weed at some point, but before, but we will do that. But I do want you to talk a little bit about that film because it is currently what's available. Um, yeah, well, I mean, they're all available, but yes. No, but I mean, I mean, like it's the current one, that the last one that you just kind of, kind of have out there. But though I do know that a lot of people are catching the Bill Murray, like it was on a list, I think, recently. Oh, yeah, well, because like the, the, uh, the quarantine, like people are just like discovering it as well, you know? It's right, which is crazy because like it was, what, a year ago when that sort of came out and everybody was all over it? Um, December but, 31st, 2018. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago. And I, I yeah. mean, anyway, so talk to me a little bit about Waldo and Weed before we go back to Murray and wrap that up. Um, well, I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm the most proud of Waldo. You know, I just think it's my best thing yet. I mean, like, you know, uh, what do you think, Ray? I mean, like, we, we got to watch that at Tribeca. I mean, Whoopi Goldberg was right in front of us enjoying the movie. Yeah, I think for me, Waldo is, it's a different beast entirely. It's, you're telling the story, you're, you know, Tommy was entrusted to tell this story through the, you know, the parents, Brian and Danielle, about little Waldo. So, you know, essentially... It, it's, you know, Murray wasn't involved in this project. That was Tommy telling his own story with, with the people there. This was a project where it's like, you know, he's a little kid. It's about, it's about this really interesting subject matter. And Tommy was entrusted to do this. So for me, it was, it was a totally different story. Really heartfelt. Like seeing it with him in, at Tribeca with Whoopi and, and like my wife was there and she was, it was like so meaningful, you know, Waldo is such an inspiring story. Like, and for me, it was just that that's what is inspiring to see how this little kid came out of this and his parents' story to do anything they can to save, essentially save their sons. So um, it has a very special place in my heart. And it's again, when Tommy told me about this, I was like, I'm, I'm out. I heard the concept. I'm like, done. I am involved. I want to be involved. I think this is a great story. And, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of it. My, I'm proud of it the most, I think. So. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So that's on right now. Where can you grab that if somebody's listening? Um, you can do on DVD and uh, Blu-ray on Amazon, iTunes, digitally, Vudu. Um, 
I believe it's everywhere digitally except for Amazon. Yeah. A little, a little I want nervous. to ask you about the end of Murray. Stop it. Stop it. The, the movie. Um, you do eventually get Murray on camera, sort of, right? Yeah. Um, he ha- does he have any knowledge of that, or what is that like? Probably does now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, you'd have to ask Bill. Right. But, I mean, for you, what you know, shooting that, knowing that he's right there and whatnot, what is that like for you? What, I can only, listen, I've met wrestlers where I was like, fuck, I'm going to meet Piper. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I can only imagine where you're like, uh, I'm going to, ah, fuck, I'm going to shoot this thing <laughs> with Murray and he's not going to know I'm shooting it, but I'm shooting it for the movie and the thing and blah, 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 you know? Well, I mean, like, so we we were working with the River Sharks. Right. River Sharks or River Dogs? River Dogs? River Dogs. The River Dogs. River Sharks is Camden. That's where I'm from. Sorry. Okay. I'm not really a real sports person. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. But yeah, so we were working with them, and they're like, it's the opening game. Bill will most likely be here. Uh, and we so took you're a that- Jersey kid. I'm sorry. Wait, I'm, I'm like Meadowlands area. Yeah, I'm like South Jersey, Philadelphia. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Once, um, once the world opens up, we're going to have a great beer together. <laughs> yeah. We're going to catch up about Jersey. We're going to talk about wrestling. It's going to be fun. I'll come to Pasadena. We'll go to Trejo's Tacos. Oh, I don't know what that is yet, but I can't wait to go because I'm... Danny fucking... Trejo? Danny Trejo. Okay, I know I know that. Yeah. <laughs> no taco thing. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead, yeah. What time is it? Seven or eight? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, so uh, where was it? Um, what? Oh no! So yeah, so we were working with the the River Dogs, and uh, they were like, he, you know, he's through opening night. He should be there, you know. So we took a gamble. You know, coming from Jersey to South Carolina, it's like a nine hour drive. It was me, Derek, and uh, actually Chris Rab, Rab himself from CKY, and we all we just drove down to South Carolina in hopes that he would be there to film something, you know, like, you know, not really much of a plan, just kind of like, we're making a documentary, we're not scripting anything, so let's just see what happens, you know? And um, we were there, we're just trying to get B-roll before anyone came in, and uh, there was this guy with stilts, you know, and me and Derek were just goofing around filming the guy with stilts, and this lady walked by us and was like, she's like, oh, you should have filmed Bill, he just walked right by you guys, like, <laughs> What? You know? And uh, your whole life is Bill Murray at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So we, that shot where you see where like I'm walking up to him is like right there after we realized he was getting in. Like you see on the movie, you're like him kind of like doing the ticket. So like we realized, but, and your heart just like free, like I everything just that. like comes that. up here. And you're like, oh my God, this is someone I've been like researching for like a year and a half. The whole um, thing. Yeah, man. Is, you know, the nine hour drive and all this stuff. And like, when I talked to Barry Blasty in the very beginning of Santa Claus, that you know, he was telling me like, you know, what's important to you is may not may not be the most important thing to someone else, you know, like, and so like I know like he like he he may know about this movie because of the the calls, uh, but he couldn't care less, you know, like he right. he's got his own thing going on. This is very important to me though, so um, it was one of those weird sort of situations where I was kind of coming at him and talking to him, and just didn't just didn't connect. Um, and then the, the, the game plan there was, cause I was in the VIP area and he was right there, but he was like talking to people, you know? And like, I just don't want to, like I've been around Mick a bunch of times and other people and like, you just don't want to like intrude because it's, you know, you, you've, you drove nine hours to be there. Like they don't care, right. you know? Yeah. So what you saw in the movie was really that, that it was like, I, I went up to him and talked to him very briefly. Uh, and wanted to see if he wanted to kind of interact uh and he did you know we got a picture together uh and that was what we got and we filmed him walking away and the car ride he knew he knew who he knew who you were at that point i have no idea i mean i I introduced myself you know Uh but he gets he meets millions of different people totally yeah um yeah i mean you guys both get this moment after the movie comes out where he talks, you kind of alluded to it earlier where he talks about this on a, mo- a morning talk show. Yeah, right. Was- Tell me about that. Right. I mean, it was great. I saw myself on the today show, but like at the end of the day, like I'm the one that made a movie about him. You know, he makes movies all the time. Right. You know, like 
he's been living this life for 69 years. You know, I've only been like educated on it for two, you know, possibly three. So he's just doing what Bill does. I'm just investigating what he's doing. Yeah. You know? So it's just two different approaches. You know, yeah. like he's just like, it's like, it'd be like someone going up to you and be like, uh, hey, so I heard you moved cross country and, uh, you know, wore a replica Ted DiBiase belt before. <laughs> right. Like, this is, this is something I did. Why are you paying attention to it? I don't, you know, like, yeah. you know, it's just something he does. We put a little spotlight on it more than a BuzzFeed article might be, you know? Sure, absolutely. I think shy, nothing bad about BuzzFeed articles, but like- I know what you mean, I know what you mean. Uh, and then we just kind of put a little bit of attention on it uh, in a, you know, kind of like, a, you know, The Tao of Bill Murray was a book that kind of did the same thing. Uh, Gavin Edwards is the author. You yeah. know, it's kind of like someone that kind of looks back and goes, there's a pattern here, there's something going on, you know? And so whether, he knew anything about that or not, it doesn't quite matter. He's just going to keep living and doing what he does and right. then I, then make Waldo and then make the next thing and make the next thing. You know, it's like we, we connected there for a second. It meant more to me than it did to him. And that's fine. You know? Yeah. Right. When you, when you guys both look back on this movie, when you guys both look back on this movie, what do you think about it now? I mean, it's been some time. It's been a couple of years, right? Uh, yeah, I think, like, <clears throat> definitely been some cool reactions online. Like, a lot of people on Twitter will say something about it randomly. Um, and we like to, like, Tommy will like one of those, that, you know, we'll go on there and kind of interact with them a little bit. But it's, it's nice to see that it still has legs um, and that it's still maybe making people happy when, especially now with things being so... yeah crappy with all this COVID stuff going around. It's nice to kind of, you know, maybe lose yourself in a movie in this kind of movie about Bill Murray here. It's inspiring in that way. So for me, um, I don't think it's changed very much besides that though. Like I feel like I still have the same feeling I had at South by when I watch it. Like I, sometimes I'll put it on just, you know, I don't know. I like watching it. And uh, me too. Yeah. It's, um, it's just like, I remember that feeling of like people liking it and um, just, just being inspired by it. So for me, it, it really hasn't changed that much. I, I'm in love with the movie still. How about you, Tommy? Uh, Hold on, I'm sorry. Unbelievable. Okay. You just you know, you just went. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looking at it now, what do you feel about it? Ray, when you posted that Waldo thing, is this a picture? It's not the video. Oh. All right, I'll fix it. <laughs> answer Peter's question. Sorry, I, I just saw that pop onto my phone. Okay. Uh, but that's that's fine. I guess we can just do that. Whatever you think. If you can't do the video. I mean, who, who's... I joke around about all these podcasts, but now I go, who's, who's listening right now? You know? <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, somebody is like, what the fuck happened here? Oh, yeah. sorry. What was the question? I Sorry, I got sidetracked. So just, what does it mean to you now, the Murray stories? I, mean, I just think it's a great movie. You know, I what what I, what I take from it is just like the, the amount of travel I got to do because of it. You know, like I, uh, you know, making the movie was a lot of fun, being at different places and, and really interacting and making friendships with a lot of different people because of it. And then also the showing of the movie, you know, like going to London to film, who oh, I've never gone to Europe before, and then going there for BFI and like, you know, someone's picking you up, there's your name's written wrong on the thing and they pick you up, you know, it's like, and you know, they, it's, it was really cool to go to London to play the movie. I think that was one of my favorite experiences, even though Hot Docs was phenomenal too. South by Southwest was phenomenal. Yeah, in their own way, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, there was, it was different, like, I mean, like, South by Southwest is a little bit more, you know, uh, rowdy, a little good barbecue, good drinks going, you know, hot dogs. It was just like a lot I of- I can go for a good barbecue there. right now, by the way. <laughs> What's that? I can go for a good barbecue at like a barbecue right now. Can you guys? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it was just, it was the connection it had. That, that, that to me is like what I take from Bill Murray the most is there was always, there was always someone there watching it uh, and enjoying it. And, you know, like Ray was saying, like, it was just- it was it was a good high, you know. It was like a little, you know, on four twenty, uh, uh, but like it was it was a lot of a lot of fun to see the reaction and the, the way people connected with it. Yeah. So anyone who's watching right now or listening to this post the live feed, listen, guys, go check this out. It's on Netflix right now. 
right? I hope I wasn't, I wasn't, I hope I wasn't, I hope I wasn't rude saying that no one's watching. <laughs> a little bit, a little rude, but I mean, we're going to delete it, so it's gone. Well, I'm, um, I, I'm supposed to be bathing my son right now, so I was hoping. I appreciate your time. And- <laughs> Get that uh, F out of here. I did say I like being the heel, right? You did say that, and I and I appreciate that because I, I grew up on heels. Uh, Roddy Piper was my favorite wrestler. Anyway, I wanted to thank you guys both for coming here. Uh, if you can catch this movie, uh, Bill Murray Stories, it's fucking incredible. Like, what you made uh, is just awesome. Uh, you tapped into something that I think uh, a lot of people have kind of heard about but now get to see in, in, in real color, or tr- technicolor, right, if we're going to go back to the old days. I mean, between Santa, Murray, and Waldo, I think the biggest compliment usually is I wasn't expecting that, you know? And- I would feel, I actually do feel like, what, you know, what, what happened for me, and I'm all about gratitude these days, so I usually wrap up on a little gratitude. And uh, for Tommy, listen, man, I remember sitting home. I didn't even, I, I had seen Santa. I love it. I think it's great. We have this wrestling background. I think it's awesome. I think... I want to know more about that. I, I hope that we can grow this at some point. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, my brother-in-law just sent me a text and said, man, you've got to check out this doc, uh, Murray Stories. And I dove into it and I just wanted, I, I consumed it and then I wanted to know more. So I Googled it and I, de- and I, de- I dug even deeper. I think that's what you're trying to do as a documentary filmmaker, right? Where, you, 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 you kind of wet the palate a little bit of like, fuck, this is the thing, but fucking Google it. You know what I mean? It's more of a thing, you know? Yeah. And you have an incredible so imagination and incredible uh, ability to tell stories. And I'm so thankful for this film. It was a, a really amazing experience watching it. And I think a lot of people watching this feel, or listening to this, feel the same way so uh, amazing work and kudos to you for this work and i can't wait to see waldo i have not dove in it though i was a pre-sale you know because i'm so okay i'm always supporting the team i just haven't downloaded (laughs) you know Uh, and to ray listen man i think you're an amazing human being you know Uh, i agree getting to know you over the last year or so has just been incredible i think uh you know uh I feel a brotherhood, a kinship, you know, I feel like we got a lot of good stuff and uh, I feel a very special uh, connection to you and a a faith almost sort of that, that, that brought us together. So uh, I appreciate you very much. And, uh, and I think uh, we're all, we all got good things coming soon. Tommy, do you have something that you're working on currently that you would like to give a little teaser to? You remember the beginning of this. I, I do, it. I do, but I, I, still call, I still called you on it, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't, I, uh, I'm doing absolutely nothing. No, yeah. I, no, no, but in all sincerity, one quick question. Was I, I'm joking. Me and Ray sort of being a at a, there's a halt in the industry right now, right, because of everything that's happening with the virus and all that. I, so. I mean, I, I, people are doing Zoom calls nonstop, and um, there's a lot of things happening, a lot of, uh, the, development people have changed to what is their uh covid or quarantine slate you know yeah but i mean in terms of shooting something or producing something you're 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 you're, you know your out your outlook has to be a little bit different at this point because you don't know when you're going to be able to get moving again hold on i'm telling my wife where the bath bombs are for me we are never allowed back on this show peter thank you so much thanks for having us no, but, but in all sincerity, Ray, what do you feel about that? 15 minutes. Come on. What do you expect from me? Hold on. What do you feel about that? How do I feel about where this um, – well, you know, you and I are working on some stuff, Peter. Yeah. Tommy and I are working on some stuff. We have a development deal where we're developing, like, five to eight projects right now, and they're all in kind of different stages. Like, we're trying to get into some scripted stuff. Um, we have a couple documentaries we're working on. Um and I think right now people want content, but it's hard to maybe sell the, you know, it's going to be hard to get this content made with all the things going on. Like there's a block on Hollywood. looks like hmm. we're not filming things. So it's like, you know, we're talking about our project. Hey, do we get a small crew together? Two people fly them out, film some stuff. Like exactly. I think we're in an, we're in uncharted waters right now. Nobody really knows how to react or what to do um, with what's going on. So, you know, people are going to want to be buying projects that are easily, makeable and you can yeah definitely skeleton crews. i feel like docs will be okay because there's yeah. small crews and they can right. 
they can invest some money in that. But I don't know. To, you, to the other filmmakers that are watching this right now that are worried about the coronavirus uh, and how it might affect their world, what advice, a couple of bits of advice, what advice do you have to just independent filmmakers in general? And then what also do you have advice to in, this, in these times? Real quick, you were saying, I think a lot of, you'll see a lot more of like, a, like Amy uh, Winehouse documentaries where a lot of people, uh, or my, my one friend made a movie, uh, You Don't Know Me. Uh, it was all about uh, showgirls. It was all, it's all like the, you're kind of just seeing the clips and it's all audio. Clip pieces, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like very like archival based, audio only, not on camera sort of stuff. I think you'll see a lot of that sort of. Okay. Uh, advice, I don't know. I mean, like I can't, you know, like I'm, I'm still <laughs> just trying to figure I it out. I think you're an amazing person to give advice. Huh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, you started at a, a place where, you know, I mean, a lot of people start. And so what would you say to filmmakers? I, you know, I would just, um, I mean, one, one of the things people said to me about making documentaries is if you, uh, if you, if you make the movie you plan on making, you didn't listen to your uh, talents. You know, I think, you know, that's one of those situations where um, you really do need to, uh, not try to be stuck in the movie you're trying to make and be open to falling down any sort of these sort of rabbit holes that the, the, the cat, especially if it's a character based thing, sure, man. you know, you, you follow all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's really good advice actually. Yeah. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for doing this. We went, I try to stick to an hour. We went an hour and 23. Oh, well, um, thank you both for being here. Uh, I'd love to have Ray on to do a whole Ghostbusters thing. So I think that would be fun. And Tommy, let's do a wrestling thing at some point. All right. Sounds good, man. All right, guys. I'm ready to go. Thanks for having us, Pete. This is awesome. All right, man. Thanks guys. Later.